Well, Jesus is gone. The disciples have scattered. Judas is dead. And everybody's wondering what's next. Today can be described in two words. Two words with millions of applications. Two words with massive implications. The first word is, is waiting. Waiting for someone, something. You know, waiting awakens the reality that I am not in charge. Waiting affirms the truth that I am not in complete control. Otherwise, I would wait for no one, for nothing. But I find myself waiting today. I've waited in the past, waited for a birthday to arrive, to deliver me my long-awaited and hopeful gift. I've waited for a friend to finally show up so I can go and conquer the world or, or at least the occasion. I've waited for payday so the weekend can be full of fun and memories and challenges and disappointments can fade into the background. I've also waited in the past, waited for a loved one to die, waited for help to arrive as I sat on an abandoned roadway in life, only to keep waiting because no one stopped to help. I've waited for a prayer to be heard and a prayer to be answered. You know, he knows about waiting. Waiting while his own creation turns their back on him. Waiting while the innocent suffer. And now we wait. Hebrews chapter 2 says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So today we wait. We wait and we wonder what he's going to do next. The second word that describes this day is empty. You know, the cross sat empty as I looked up on the hill. It was stained. The cross's shadow seemed to stretch farther than it did yesterday. It's, it's empty. Empty like the crowd's hope-filled dreams of being on the side of the conqueror for once. It's empty like the disciple's heart that had dared to hope in their version of Messiah, only to be disappointed yet again. Empty like the hillsides that were once packed with hungry people who came to eat and left more satisfied than just in their stomachs. I believe that we understand empty today, maybe a little bit more than we have in the past. Empty, empty classrooms, empty offices, empty sanctuaries, empty playgrounds, empty homes, and, and empty hearts. And Jesus wants to meet us in that emptiness today, 1 Corinthians 15 says, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. You know, uh, as great as the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was, today is a day we remember what life would have been like if Jesus hadn't come back to life. Would anyone have dared to believe on this day so many years ago in an empty tomb? The tomb today for those disciples is full. Would you dare to believe today in an empty tomb? Because today, reminds us of an empty cross, an empty hope, and empty promises, at least from our perspective. Today is a day of waiting, of embracing the emptiness of this moment, of, of embracing the emptiness in our own soul, of feeling the weight of our need for a Savior. But our waiting is different. 